There's a quote that changed my life from Earl Nightingale, and he said, Today is the day you dreamt of five years ago, is everything you dreamed of. We all have this vision of the future, and we think that, you know, when I get older, I'm going to figure out that one thing. But the sad truth is that for most human beings on earth, it doesn't happen. Because we project out and think that I'm just going to figure it out then. And we don't do anything today in alignment with reaching that goal. So in this video, I thought I would share three pieces of advice to my younger self that I would have killed to know a decade ago. Hey guys, I'm Alex Hyen over at Modern Health Monk. Before we jump into this video, check out the free journaling worksheet right below the video. It'll help you figure out what you want from your future, design your dream life, and get clear on what it would take to actually make that happen. So it's the first link below. My first piece of advice to my younger self is that there's never a good time. If you have a dream, take action every day, at least an hour a day towards that dream. I reflect back on my life and I think, what are some of the things that I've done that I never thought I would do? I never thought I would ever upload videos on the internet to the point of, you know, millions of views collectively, sometimes on an average month, right? When exactly was there going to be a good time for that? I have no interest in being a performer or a speaker or pulling out a video camera. I had no interest. I don't even consume YouTube videos. So how the hell did this happen? I decided that let me do this experiment and see what happens. The same was true of my books. I never thought I would ever write books. And now I've written two full length ones and will probably write 10 more throughout my life in the next 20 years. But that was never the plan. I just decided, you know what? When I look around at all the wannabes who say they want to write books, how many of them are actually dedicating 10 minutes a day towards writing the supposed book they want to write? Uh, Jack diddly shit. Zero people are that I know, right? And I know a lot of people that say they want to write a book. How many people want to, let's say, take a year sabbatical or walk the Camino de Santiago in Spain for a month? Lots. And how many do I know that have done it? Only a couple. And there are many others who could quit their job or take a month off and negotiate something with their boss. It wouldn't be easy, but they could do it. Most of the things you want to do, you're telling yourself, one day I'll do that. But the funny thing is, you won't. Because you're telling yourself, one day I'll do that as a defense mechanism because you're afraid. And it's scary to start something new. So if you can recognize that that's BS, a story that prevents you from taking action, you'll take action today. Second piece of advice is that successful people are not special. I remember a peak experience for me was when I had been idolizing this entrepreneur. Like when I started my entrepreneurial journey, I was learning a lot from other entrepreneurs and I was trying to just be dedicated to this process of self growth about something I didn't have much skill in. There was this one entrepreneur that had a multi-million dollar business, right? A seven figure business. And I was shocked. I mean, I was like, man, what it would take to have a seven figure business. If I could just do that, I would be good for the rest of my life. Now, when I finally met that entrepreneur, I learned that his business was only making enough money to pay himself $70,000. Now, what was crazy at that time was that I was making little less than $100,000 a year, but I was almost paying myself the same salary as this guy who had a multi-million dollar or a million dollar plus business. And I thought, this guy looks so much more successful, but we actually have really the same success in terms of our personal income in our business. And that I was idolizing this guy so much, thinking that he was so special. And now that I met him, he's not particularly smart. He's not more driven than me. He's not more connected or resourced. It's just a different business with different timing and different factors. And as I began to study more successful people, I didn't find that many of them were that special. They didn't possess unusual intellect. They didn't possess more of a work ethic than I did. Maybe they just chose different businesses or a different industry, or they were lucky with their timing. And so their same work ethic produced exponential results. Most of the people you admire are not that special. They are hard workers, they're strategic, they think a lot, they're deliberate, they're action takers, but not special. And when you realize that, it'll set you free. Because when you realize there's no difference, you realize you have what it takes. Piece of advice number three, every step you take leads you to the next. We have this idea, especially the perfectionists in the audience, the people who think, I need to think of that five-year plan, plan out the next five years of my life. And a lot of the time, we think that if we don't know the exact way that it's going to happen, it won't happen. But that's not true. You know, for me, this whole thing here 
started off with a website. That website led to a product. An online product led to a second product. A second product led to a third, which led to me being bored to starting a YouTube channel. The YouTube channel led to writing a book, which led to another book, which led to sponsorships and interesting packages and in-person events. Everything leads to the next thing. It's like the drunken staircase analogy I share in my second book, Milk the Pigeon. You know, trying to figure out what to do with your life is when you're stumbling home drunk on a staircase with your iPhone flashlight and you just know if you get that first step, you're not gonna eat it and you'll be able to make it up the steps or down the steps. So if you find that first step, then you shine the flashlight to get the second step, then the third and the fourth. So if you can figure those out, then you'll always lead you to the next, but you often don't even know the second or third step until you're on the first. And if you don't even take the chance, you'll never even know what the first is. So almost everything in life leads to the next thing. It's that move that leads to the chance encounter in your business or in your love life. It's that career opportunity that leads to the next career opportunity. It's you meet that one person and it leads to an, your best friend because they're in the same friend group. It's picking up that hobby that lets you meet the love of your life, right? Each step non-linearly leads to the next thing but you don't have to figure out the next five steps. It will happen. So those are three profound experiences and thoughts about reflecting on the last 10 to 15 years of my life that I hope will help. Reflect on those, get the journaling worksheet below the video, and let me know what you guys think.